Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode nine of the DLF Commissioner Chronicles. This is a YouTube series all about how to implement different league settings in your Dynasty Fantasy Football League. I am Nathan Powell. I'm a writer at Dynasty League Football. See the shirt over here, Dynasty League Football. This is the DLF YouTube page. Make sure to like and subscribe to this page right now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, right right now. Did you do it? Did you do it? Pause. Did you do it? Okay, you did it. Good. All right. Now, Today, episode nine, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite formats as a commissioner, and that's best ball. Now, you might say best ball, like you just click a button. And to start off, that is the first thing you do when you're doing uh, best ball. The first thing you need to do on your on your fantasy league service is click a button that says do not use lineups, use automated generated lineups. What's best ball? It's using your entire team, and it gives you the top scores that so let's say your your roster is 30 and your lineup is 10 one running back two wide receivers two running backs one tight end and the rest are flexes your roster will fill out automatically based on the scores from that week so you'll never have a guy blow up on your bench because every the top scores at each position will be put into your lineup in the best ball format now best ball dynasty is quite a bit different from the you know traditional best ball redraft that many you know, I feel like best ball is more incorporated with the redraft sphere of a draft only league that you see on many platforms. Um, but best ball dynasty is a different ball game and there are different ways to go about it. And as a commissioner, you have to nav navigate what you want for the league and how to implement it. So uh, first with best ball, when you're thinking the first thing you need to consider for a best ball dynasty league is rosters. Now, it's kind of the case no matter what, that the deeper the better. But when you're thinking of how many roster spots you want for your best ball league, increase the number. Whatever you, the number you think it is, you should, you should go higher. Because best ball should be higher than your traditional uh, dynasty league because you're allowing for all these scores to come in. And it, you're, the, the deeper your roster is, the more that you are rewarding team building. And the one thing I like about best ball is that each year you're rewarding the best team rather than the best lineup in a traditional dynasty league or any fantasy league. That's not best ball. You're rewarding. Okay. This guy had the best, you know, nine players that he was starting each and every week. Whereas best ball, it's, this is the best 30 players, the best 28 players, however many players you, you have on your roster, your team is what makes you a good team, not your lineup. Um, so that is one of the benefits. And so when you're creating your roster, you have to decide, okay, how deep you want it to be. I recommend 30. I think 30 is a sweet spot of still leaving something to be desired in the off season, but also, um, or even if you're doing waivers in season, something to be desired off in the off and during the season. But for the most part, you're covering all your bases. You know, you're all the players that are, are scoring points for the most part are rostered in a 30 roster spot, best ball dynasty league. Uh, next you have lineups. Lineups you can get a little bit more creative because in your traditional dynasty league, I feel, I feel like the the more flexible, the better. You know, if you have one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, one tight end, and then the rest flexes and maybe a super flex, that you know you give the people flexibility. I actually think that with best ball, you could be a little bit more, more rigid. I, the the flexibility works as well, but you can say, okay, I want people to be able to build through all the different or have to build through all the different positions that you, you can't just load up a wide receiver. You can't just load up a running back. You got to do both. In order to do that, you can do the traditional two running back through wide receiver and then flexes. Um, but also having, having more, a more flexible lineup works as well. But I do think if you want to reinforce building all types of ways um, or building through both ways, instead of just, you know, being more rigid with one position, then, you know, build out a lineup more so than just saying, okay, one of every position in all flexes. Um, so that's how I do my lineups is I, I, I personally do one, one, one quarterback, one, uh, two run, running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, and then flexes depending on if it's super flex, one or two flexes, and then maybe a super flex as well. Um, now, next part is waivers. Uh, a lot of the things, one of the things that people hate the most as a commissioner, as a player is waivers. And that is what gravitates me towards best ball. Now in my best ball dynasty leagues, I don't have waivers. I have two waiver runs each year. I have one to start the off season, one to end the off season. I don't have any in season waivers. And so that just allows for minimal uh, need to like, 
yes, you, you want the people to still go to the league site and trade and, and obviously during the draft, but waivers are a pain and they are just another thing to add to your to-do list. And when you have a best ball league that has minimal or no waivers, that's one less thing you have on to-do list each week um, for, for your league. So I do advocate, I think that most people who are joining a best ball league are trying to decrease the amount of things they have to do each week. They don't want to have to submit a lineup for that league on Sunday mornings. So if you want to continue that minimal minimalist type uh, functionality, you also do minimal or no waivers. Um, yeah. So, I mean, th there's even the possibility of doing no waivers and you just do a free agency rookie draft uh, during, during, you know, May. I also have a free agency rookie draft in August that kind of catches all those players that went undrafted as well as any uh, free, uh, you know, veterans that, would um, you know become more uh, desirable between May and August, which certainly happens every year because of you know random injuries, or this year of course uh, the the opting out and things like that. Um, so with, with waivers, and if you if you want to do traditional waivers, those work too. Um, but I, I I kind of think that weekly waivers defeat the purpose of a best ball dynasty league, and that is to do minimal uh, minimal action. So. Next is trades and trade deadlines. Once again, this can be done um, in many different ways, and there's not a right or wrong answer. Um, I have best ball leagues that have trading year round. The only time that it stops is in between the championship and when people have paid their league dues. I also have leagues that have zero transactions, no waivers or no trades between NFL kickoff in September to NFL ending in week 16. Um, I think both are viable formats. Uh, one of the benefits of not having trading during uh, September to December is that there is a lot of action in August that people are looking at their rosters and saying, this is what I, this is what I need. This is what I want to trade away. This is what I want to get. And I, we, we'll, we'll talk about it in a future episode, trade deadlines and the trade deadline when you don't have in season transactions is an active trade deadline because like, okay, I know that, if I want to compete this year, I want to, I need to add these pieces. Or if I don't want to compete this year, these are the pieces I need to trade away before they're valueless by the time uh, December gets here. So I, I like the action that that provides. But having in-season trades works as well for best ball. Um, there's nothing that really takes away from the experience by having uh, trades during the season for best ball. Um, you, it allows for activity. And that's a, a positive as well. So um, when you're creating your best league, you kind of just want to know like how active do you want it to be in season? If you want it to be an active league in season, um, you might consider waivers. You might consider allowing trades in season. Um, and also you can, you can do one without the other. You can not allow waivers, but also, but still allow trades, um, which I think is the most common form of best ball dynasty leagues that I've seen, even though mine traditionally don't have in season uh, trades. And the last thing um is standings and or playoffs. Like I've talked about, more so than your traditional dynasty league or fantasy league, best ball rewards the best team, not the best lineup, not the best who had the best last best three weeks, who had the best team. And so with that, with my best ball leagues, I like to do whether it either, either all play or points and just do weeks one to 16 and have that determined who is your champion, who, you know, the, the standings there determine your champion, who has the 101, who, has, who gets second place, third place, whatever your payouts may be, your standings are by points overall or by uh, all play, not by your traditional head-to-head, -head, not by a playoff format. Um, I have seen best ball leagues that do have a player playoff format because the there are some people who say best ball. I really just don't want to do lineups and that I still want to do in season waivers. I still want to do, um, you know, a, a tr your traditional playoff format. I still want to do head to head format. And so you do kind of have, like, and I feel like I say this over and over in all these, these videos that you have to decide what you want for your league and you can decide what you want for your league by making these rules. If you want it to be active year round, you want to have trades and waivers and all those things. That's fine. It's the, if you want the only best ball part of your league to be the fact that it's best ball and you don't submit a lineup, that's great. If you want it to have trades year round, but you don't want to do waivers, that's cool too. Um, so you kind of just have to decide what you want to do. And honestly, the more like in season active you make it, like if you allow waivers, you should allow trades. If you allow waivers and trades, you should have, a, you should maybe have a head to head. If you have head to head, you should definitely have a playoff format. Um, but 
basically you kind of have to decide how deep into the activity in season that you want to do. And that's deciding what you want to do with waivers, whether it's no waivers, waivers only in the off season, maybe one or two runs or in season waivers. And then you have trades when you have, want your trade deadline to be, if you have in season trades, do you want there to be a trade deadline? If you have an, a playoff format, do you want there to be a, a trade deadline? So there's so many things to implement when you're doing uh, best ball, so many ways to go about doing it that you just have to go with what you want. Do you want waivers? Do you want trades? Do you want head to head? And those things kind of form together to how you are building your dynasty league. So when you're writing up your bylaws as commissioner and you just have to know what you want and uh, how you want the league to be run and communicate that to your owners. And if you're trying to, if you're in years two, three or four, and you're trying to trade one of those things, it's one of those things that you have to have full agreement with, with your league. You have to, you know, everyone joined the league expecting one thing, expecting no waivers, expecting no trades during the season. And if you don't have that consensus agreement, then you really can't do it or you're kind of forcing people's hands to either leaving or just not enjoying the league. So when you're starting the league, know what you want and only make tr- changes when absolutely necessary in terms of activity. There's, you know, more things like, you know, adding a roster, adding a, a roster spot or adding a, a lineup spot. Those are things that aren't necessarily as needed for consensus, but activity things like lineups, waivers, trade deadlines, standings, all those things have a large impact on whether someone wants to continue in a league or not. So decide what you want for your league in your best ball league and uh, go from there. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this Dynasty Best Ball Commissioner Chronicles. If you have any questions about best ball leagues, I'm happy to answer them in the comments or at NPowellFF. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week.